it's a pleasure for me to introduce our next candidate. Just a quick thing, we call our candidates by their last name, so try to remember their last name. And students need to touch this thing here for good luck. Our next candidate is Mr. Fergus Clark. So, hello, uh, my name is Fergus Clark, and um, I'm here to present my masterworks. I'd uh, first like you to watch this little clip and try and pay as best uh, attention as you possibly can. <laughs> Across North America, we have seen super storms and floods that have overwhelmed our community. Sometimes it doesn't mean everybody. The burning fossil fuels you don't give up. cutting down forests are the two biggest driving forces in climate change. These two human activities you know, release large amounts of carbon dioxide and other gases into our atmosphere that have surrounded the planet as CO2 levels rise, okay, that's enough. temperatures Captain, rise. people are so, afraid. As the world gets warmer, the climate change. That's why I'm here. We need to be put in check. Whatever form that takes on me. Tony, if I see a situation pointed south, I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. Sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth. I know we're not. But the safe sands are still out. The atmosphere soaks up water vapor like a smoke. All right, so uh, how did that make you feel? <laughs> uh, can you... Trouble staying focused? Were you uh, distracted, unfocused, uh, annoyed, uh, frustrated, confused? <laughs> uh, thank you for being here, and I hope you enjoy. As for David Suzuki and climate change, well, I don't really have to do anything with my presentation. Uh, however, paying attention does, so uh, I'd like to welcome you all to my world of ADHD. Um, so during my grade eight year at IPS, uh, the workload increased a lot more than I expected, a lot more than I was prepared for. Uh, this left me feeling overwhelmed. I was trying hard and I was put in effort, but my report card suggested otherwise. This is the case for each term. By term three, I was pretty frustrated. Uh, I began to ask myself why I was putting in so much work and yet not getting the results I'd wished for. Uh, at the end of my grade eight year, my parents and I decided that I'd go for a psychological educational assessment, or more commonly known as a PEA or a psych ed, to see if I had any attention, focus, or organizational issues. Uh, in July of 2015, it was confirmed that, yeah, I do you got ADHD. <laughs> so what is, it, what, what is ADHD? Well, ADHD stands for hyper, uh, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Uh, it was first recognized as a disorder in 1902. Uh, many people, including doctors, thought it was a result of a serious brain damage. Uh, ADHD is the most prevalent childhood disorder in North America. Uh, people with ADHD don't have a deficit of attention, but rather self-regulation of attention, slash priority of attention. Uh, and there's three types, uh, PIP, PHP, and CP. So the acronyms on the slide stand for predominantly inattentive presentation, predominantly hyperactive presentation, and the combined presentation. PIP is the type of ADHD that I have. So here's a diagram that shows you what the gist of PIP, PHP, and CP kind of is. While not scientifically accurate, I feel it helps to understand what each one of these acronyms means. Uh, so the AD in ADHD uh, kind of, in my mind, relates to PIP, predominantly inattentive presentation. Uh, the HD in ADHD stands for hyperactivity disorder, which uh, pretty much directly relates to predominantly hyperactive presentation. And the entire acronym ADHD, um, in my mind, stands for, uh, or is kind of like the com a combination presentation, because you have both attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. So these are some symptoms that people with 
specifically the uh, predominant intent of presentation of ADHD have. So, I think some of them make careless mistakes, uh, forgetfulness, scattered, easily distracted, uh, trouble staying on task, daydreaming, missing details, and organizational difficulties. So, who does ADHD affect? Well, ADHD is now one of the most prominent childhood disorders in North America. Uh, population studies show that 6 to 10 percent of children in North America are affected by it. Uh, that's approximately one, uh, three students per classroom of 30. Um, therefore, the more teachers understand about ADHD, the more they can help their students. So ADHD may persist into adulthood, uh, causing disruptions to both professional and personal life. It was previously thought that all children with ADHD eventually outgrow it. Uh, however, recent studies suggest that 30 to 60 percent of individuals affected by it in their youth continue to show significant symptoms into their adulthood. So the structure of the ADHD brain, so science. Um, so doctors have found using fMRI, uh, functional magnetic response imagery, that the uh, frontal cortex, that kind of area up in the front, uh, the part of the, is the part of the brain that is responsible for executive functioning skills, um, such as attention, memory, and planning, is somewhat less developed in children with ADHD. Scientists also report that sometimes there is gray matter and cortical thickness deficits. Uh, gray matter controls the brain's neuronal cell bodies. It regulates self-emotion, or it regulates emotion, self-control, and sensory perception. It's also thought that ADHD may affect white matter in your brain as well. So white matter, that all white stuff in there, um, it's the stuff that sends uh, signals from point A to point B, kind of like a highway inside your brain. Um, so over time, this difference may and generally will be normalized, but I'm, I'm not suggesting that ADHD kids have small brains and are less smart. Um, Obviously, I mean, look at me. Uh, <laughs> but there may be structural differences present at the time in their brain. Uh, so, higher order executive functioning. So, executive functioning slash functions are a set of processes that all have to do with managing oneself and one's resources in order to achieve a goal. It's an umbrella term for the neurologically based skills involving mental control, uh, self regulation, and self or mental control and self regulation. Um, there are four elements of executive functioning, which I'll explain later in the presentation. So uh, expect delays, an important part of understanding ADHD and why some P ADHD people act as they do, is knowing that there's a rough developmental delay in their executive functioning skills. Now this is not to say that the delay affects every kid with ADHD, however it is prominent in people with ADHD. Uh, so, Research suggests that executive functioning is delayed 30% in students with ADHD. So a 12-year-old, despite normal intelligence, might exhibit the executive functioning of an 8- to 9-year-old, leaving them more adult dependent. So top-down and bottom-up attention, or the two attention systems. So the human brain actually has two attention systems, uh, bottom-up and top-down. Uh, both of these attention systems contribute differently towards our ability to be able to focus our attention and be able to choose to focus that attention onto the right thing. So bottom up, it has a faster brain response time which operates in milliseconds. It's involuntary, on automatic, it's always turned on. It's intuitive, uh, it's impulsive. Uh, so top down on the other hand is slower, it's uh, actually voluntary, you have to put effort into using it. It's the cockpit of self-control. Um, kind of our executive functioning center. Uh, it's able to learn new models, make new plans, and take charge of our automatic repertoire. So I like to think of both of these systems as parts of an airplane. Uh, your bottom up attention system is like your radar. It's constantly scanning for things to pay attention to. Uh, it's always turned on and makes you aware of things that you might not even know you're aware of at the time. So for instance, I'm aware of the little suggestion box in that back corner, that there's a piano over there. Uh, there's a big window, uh, yeah, and I don't even have to be paying attention to it. Um, so your top-down attention system is your captain. My captain's name is Jimmy. So <laughs> Jimmy's job as captain is to prioritize what I, uh, what prioritize what to focus my attention to from the information he receives on his radar. So these are two attention, these are our two attention systems, and. Uh, 
ADHD people diff have, tend to have a difficulty balancing out the two. So how I've learned to handle my ADHD. After I was diagnosed with ADHD, my parents and I talked about ways that this would help me overcome and deal with the impacts of it on my daily life and schooling. So the biggest challenge for me is in the area of executive functioning. Uh, working memory, planning, organization, sustained attention, and task completion. So children with the, uh, who have the combined presentation, PIP and PHP, have even greater difficulties because in addition to the skills just mentioned, uh, they also struggle with self-regulation effect or hyperactivity, uh, response inhibition control, and metacognition. Kind of a mouthful to say. Uh, so OST. So OST is, stands for Organizational Skills Training. It's an evidence-based intervention program designed to improve key organizational skills in students with ADHD. Uh, difficulties with organization, not handing in homework, losing materials, etc. So I participated in this program with Delma Campbell as my tutor slash mentor for four months. Uh, Delma, thank you so much for being here today. Um, so it was a privilege to work with you, and I consider myself very lucky and fortunate to have had you as a tutor. Um, so Delma worked with me to kind of help me demystify many areas and aspects of my ADHD. Uh, thanks to her, I now have a far greater understanding of how my immature executive functioning skills are. <laughs> and uh, how I can continue to develop strategies to help me succeed. So now I'm gonna explain uh, the four key elements of OST. Uh, got a couple little diary entries here. Uh, I'm gonna read you guys them. So, uh, track it in silence. Dear diary, I'm, today's Sunday. I'm not sure of the date. <laughs> Just shows you how on top of things I am at the moment. <laughs> diary, the reason I'm writing to you is because I'm mad at myself. I didn't hand in one of my assignments. I've missed deadlines and such before, believe me, because I just simply haven't completed the assignment. However, this time it's different. I'm angry because I finished and presented the assignment. I'm angry because I put in a bunch of effort. I'm angry because I tracked this assignment from the day it was handed out all the way to the presentation day. I'm angry because I did all of this and still didn't actually hand it in. <laughs> um, this did teach me a couple things though. It taught me that I need to track my assignments from start to the finish, not just to the presentation date. And it also taught me that the assignment's never done until it's in the teacher's hand. So, uh, managing materials. Dear diary, today we had science right after first break. I was walking to class with my friends when one of them started talking about the, ass the assignment we were given yesterday. Oh no, I try to say. Or I say. I try to remember when and if the teacher even did hand out an assignment yesterday. I'm even more unhappy when I remember she did. I mean, she wasn't even the worst part. It was the fact that I'd actually finished the assignment, just didn't take it to school with me. Uh, I tried not to think about it. I sat down in class and wait. It feels like it's been going on for hours. I look at the clock, it reads 11.30. Great, <coughs> only half an hour left to go. And I think, hey, she doesn't mention anything about the assignment. Maybe I'm in the clear. With 10 minutes left in class, uh, she says, all right, everyone, time to hand in your homework. She walks around the room and gets to me. I'm really sorry. I did the homework. I just left it at school. Believe me. Well, if it's not at school, when it's due, you may as well not have even done it, she replies firmly. This annoyed me. Not because of what the teacher said. I mean, Pam was perfectly in the right to say what she did. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Pam, I don't know where you are right now. Um, but it was because I never seemed to be able to manage my materials properly. So, uh, time management. Sorry, I just had to fight this little diary here for a second. Uh, so, uh, dear diary, uh, yesterday I messed up. I walked home from Horseshoe Bay thinking that I had more time than I did. At the time, I genuinely thought it would only take me 30 minutes. Unfortunately, it took me over an hour. From there on, it was just a slippery slope. My phone had conveniently died, so I didn't get the text from my mom telling me she was going to pick me up. I also forgot what time rugby practice started at. Uh, so, I, so I returned home, and my mom wasn't there. Weird. And I paid it no attention. Not even five minutes later, she returned home from having to be to uh, collect me. She was not happy. Like... <laughs> 
really not happy. <laughs> I just sat there and listened to what she had to say and uh, apologized. And then I asked what time we were going to rugby. Rugby had already started half an hour ago, but I wasn't aware of that. Uh, she told me this and I just sighed. Time management has never really been my forte. So task plan. Dear Dara, today I went to my OST tutor. We talked about the biggest and the baddest part of uh, the four elements in higher order executive functioning. Task planning. Task planning, to be able to, or to be able to do this, I, need to, I have to be able to track my assignments, manage my materials, and manage my time in order to accomplish task planning at a reasonable level. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm slowly getting better at managing my materials and tracking my assignments, but when it comes to uh, time management, I'm hooped. Yeah, I've been thinking, there's definitely going to be some trial and error, no doubt about it. But you know what they say, practice makes perfect. And I'm definitely not perfect, but I will practice. And what you focus on grows. You know what, diary, I've had a change in mind. I'm not hooped. I never have been, I'm just a little under the average level. I just need to hone in my time management skills and I will be able to perform task planning at a reasonable level, as long as I put my mind to it. So. Uh, that kind of concludes the diary segment of this presentation. So, <laughs> moving on. Uh, so the learning environment. So in addition to working with the elements of executive functioning, Delma also helped me understand um, how the impact of my working environment can affect my learning and ability to improve my executive functioning skills. So the slide kind of speaks for itself. Would you rather work on that place or that place? You decide. Interesting. <laughs> so, my strategy is for ADHD, or dealing with it, uh, so self-talk. I talk to myself. This is my favorite because it can be used in multiple situations. For example, when I'm distracted, I might close my eyes and say, alright, brain, you gotta pay attention. Now's, now's when it kind of matters. You gotta focus. Uh, so, fresh air. I take a step outside my workplace. Uh, whether it's my desk at home or even in class. Uh, sometimes I just need to get away from my desk. Even going outside for a moment can help. I help find this really helps me reset and refresh. So uh, tunnel vision. I picture myself looking down two cardboard tubes so I can see nothing around me but my work. Therefore honing out all distractions around me. And uh, finally, Ohio. Kind of weird. Uh, but this actually stands for only handle it once. So a good example of this is when I make lunch for myself in the morning. By using Ohio, uh, or by using Ohio, I'm less likely to do half the job and get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> That's some nice shoes you got there, those Nikes. <laughs> Sorry, uh, distractions, right. Um, so by using Ohio in self-talk, it reminds me to keep my focus of attention on the task at hand. Kind of ironic. Um, Namely, making my lunch, or doing my master's presentation, uh, and, com to, and then to complete the task and move on to the next thing. So, one piece of advice for teachers. Uh, so the one piece of advice I'd give to you guys is to uh, use saliency points. Uh, this is knowing what's important and what's not, i.e. what to focus their attention to. I think this will help every child, especially those with ADHD. I mean, you know me, sometimes zoning out in class and missing the most important parts of a, an assignment or a lesson. So, for example, a saliency point is when the teacher says, uh, before the most important part of a lesson, if you're gonna take one thing out of this lesson, let it be example here. Which leads me into this. If you're gonna take one thing or a couple things out of my presentation, let them be that ADHD is far more prevalent than people realize. Uh, it's the most prominent disorder in North America. Uh, or childhood disorder. Uh, it's more complex than just hyperactive, inattentive kids. Uh, the acronym ADHD is somewhat misleading because it's not actually a deficit of attention, but more or less the deficit of uh, the ability to prioritize your attention. So, conclusion. I've learned a lot about myself during these last nine months. I've actually learned how to work. Uh, Masterworks is a great example. I did it by integrating all the organizational strategies that I was learning from Delma, whilst at the same time completing my masterworks. 
I had to literally practice what I was preaching. Uh, my hope is that this presentation demonstrates uh, challenges students with ADHD face and consequently raise awareness and demystify ADHD and show how it can be overcome. Uh, and now I would like to thank all my advisors. So thank you, Amanda. Uh, thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Sharon. Uh, you all helped me out so much while writing my paper and giving me ideas for this presentation. Secondly, I'd like to thank my parents uh, for helping me through the entirety of this project and helping me get back on track when my focus decided to take an unexpected coffee break. <laughs> uh, thirdly, I'd like to thank uh, Logan, he's not here today, uh, Sky, and my cat for putting up with my cringy practice scripts and giving me encouragement. <laughs> And finally, thank you all for listening and, more importantly, paying attention to me. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Island Pacific School, I'm incredibly pleased to announce that Mr. Fergus Clark has now completed all the requirements of his master's degree.